more interested in the brands that we, and products that we work on. And so I work on our Mike, Mike is Beautiful brand. Um, you guys probably heard of it um, through the introduction um, that, um, that was given to you, but I'm curious to hear from a couple of you, what do you know about My Black is Beautiful? And just to encourage some dialogue and conversation, I got some stuff up here. And we'll be keeping track so you get first dibs on um, picking out your stuff. So, what do you guys know about My Black is Beautiful? I guess black is beautiful. She says, it's like, is it like a natural hair product? Kind of. Tell, tell me more. Somebody else tell me something else. I think you were going to say something in the back. Was it somebody was going to say something? I was going to say, I guess making black more beautiful. True. Awesome. What else do you guys know? Have you seen anything from us? Any ads? Any products? Have you ever seen um, one of these t-shirts? Yes. So, um, my life is beautiful is a, a variety of things because it is a, it's really about a movement to um, inspire people to um, define their own beauty standards. And so for a long time, um, the beauty industry put out images of white women with thick, long, wavy hair, and that was the representation of beauty. Lighter skin, um, long hair, and thin um, body, and all of those things don't reflect everybody. Beauty is much broader than that. And so My Black is Beautiful really wanted to drive representation of what people, black people like me, that how we look and um, what is important to us. So um, we've been talking and engaging through social. We have over 2.6 million women on Facebook in our community there. Um, we do emails on a monthly basis. We've had a large TV campaign um, called um, The Talk that was integrated into the show Blackish and has won um, countless awards in terms of its role in driving conversation and awareness about the conversations parents have to have with their kids. So um, what I want to talk to you about today is a little bit about my own um, experience and um, how I came to be here. So I want to introduce you um, to my family. I'm one of six kids. I grew up in Houston, Texas. Um, my parents um, are from Texas and their parents were from Texas and that's as far back as I've been able to trace my roots back to slavery. Um, I have, I'm the, the fifth of six kids. Um, my oldest sister, um, as you see in the background, passed away three years ago. And that was a huge shift for our family because we're incredibly close knit. Um, we just, we really like each other, we're friends, we like to hang out with each other. So I lost a friend and a sister, but um, it's really just um, a key part of who I am. So I wanted to share that with you guys. I also have a daughter, um, she's five years old. And um, we have our small little family here in Cincinnati. I don't have any family here. Um, my friends have become my family. And so I built a community around my daughter Evangeline. Um, and we um, try to do a lot of fun stuff in and around downtown where we live. And um, we're taking our first international trip together um, in two weeks to South Korea. So really excited about her having that experience because she is a child that has um, a global heritage. Um, her father is from the Democratic Republic of Congo. He and I met in South Africa, and um, she has a broad network of family in Sub-Saharan Africa, um, concentrated in Congo and South Africa, but in other countries as well. Yeah. When? In 2008 was my first trip, and um, I've been back twice, well, more than that a few times since then. But um, I went to South Africa, Cape Town, Johannesburg. That was my first time um, visiting the continent. And I just fell in love with um, the connection that I felt. Like I mentioned, all in connection to my heritage that I've been able to trace is back to slavery. And I know that my family has a heritage much broader than slavery. And when I went to South Africa, it was the first time where I went somewhere and I saw my face in, in other people. Um, so it was just a real big transformational experience for me. So my daughter goes to um, 
uh, school here in Cincinnati and it's just having a very different experience than I had growing up. Me with all my siblings and my cousins and all that stuff, she doesn't know anything about that. It's just she and I in our little world. So um, I'm trying to do my best to introduce her to more. Um, about the work that um, I get to do, um, I have, I have said I have kind of a cool job. There are some real nice perks with some of the stuff um, that we get to do. Because we are um, one of the largest advertisers in the world, we make a lot of TV commercials at PNG. We do a lot of things with media partners like BET and um, Essence. And so we connect in with celebrities through different experiences. And one of the things that we did was we talked with um, Erica Campbell, who's a gospel artist. She has a radio show. Um, she was part of the group Mary Mary. Um, and she just talked to us about how she um, engages in beauty. She has a teenage daughter. Um, so we got to work with her. That's um, some of my team members right there. Um, if you go to the next slide, you'll see um, this is um, our team in Los Angeles at an awards presentation. Like I mentioned, the talk has won tons of awards in, um, in, in, in the advertising world for its impact that it's had and the conversation that it drove. And so this is us um, just having a good time. Um, and it's fun. There are not a lot of times that you get to dress up after prom um, and after your wedding. It's kind of like few and far between. Um, Funerals. So we, get, we get to dress up. Um, it, it's a lot of fun. Did you want to say something? You get dressed up for a lot of funerals. Funerals? Mm -hmm. I like that. I mean, I don't, I don't know about you, but when I go to a funeral, I typically don't, don't wear fancy stuff. And, I wear a suit. Um, but, okay, clean. So, next yeah, one. Um, yeah. Any of you ever seen the show Pretty Little Liars? Um, Ashley Benson used to be on that show. Um, some of the times what we do for our campaigns is we hire a celebrity and they talk about our products because nobody wants to hear from me in the media or people that work on the brand. They want to talk to celebrities, the magazines, the, um, the TV shows, they want to get um, celebrities on the show. And so that's our way to kind of um, insert ourselves into conversations that are happening um, in popular culture. And so she, was, she worked um, on a campaign with us for Olay um, Body Wash. And so um, we got to hang out together and um, she's incredible to work with. Um, We'll say that in general, uh, most of the celebrities are just really nice to work with. They they tend to be super helpful. Um, this was at Black History Month at PNG. Um, we really um, the company really does have a commitment to increasing diversity on all vectors. So that includes gender, um, uh, language. Um, uh, mental abilities, um, physical abilities, um, on all levels, including race. And um, for Black History Month, we brought in Amanda Seals, who's a comedian. Um, she's on the show um, on HBO, Insecure. Hopefully none of y'all watch that. Um, but um, it, it's a great, she's a, a great uh, advocate, voice, important voice in the black community. And so that's a picture of us um, at Black History Month. And I'll tell you more about how I'm going to work with her and something um, coming up that we're doing. 